My name is Greg Critchlow. I'm a biocurator at the RCSB Protein Data Bank. And I just want to briefly introduce what we're going to be learning in this course. After my brief introduction, we're going to have a presentation from Dr. Ezra Pesak, who will be discussing the conceptual framework behind the PDBX MMSA format and the syntax involved. Uh, following that will be Dr. Brian Hudson, who will be discussing how we can generate PDBX MMSA files, how we can use them, how we can edit them, uh, in various practical applications. <clears throat> and following that will be a couple of presentations from Dr. Irina Persakova and Dr. Cheng Shao, who will be discussing ways to extract data from file, analyze metadata from PDBX MMSA files, how to do these um, manually via web portals, web interfaces, and also programmatically. And then uh, Dr. Stephen Burley will be back at the end for closing remarks. So that's who we are. Now I want to discuss a little bit about who you are, who is in the audience. Uh, we noticed that we had a wide range of participants of varied backgrounds who registered. Most of you have deposited data in the PDB, but there's a large fraction of not. And in terms of your experience with PDBX MM SIF, there's a wide range of backgrounds. Um, many, um, not quite half, but many have used PDBX MM files, MM SIF files for their research. Um, quite a number have heard about the format, but not very familiar with it and some have never heard about the format. So people are, have a wide range of backgrounds. And in this course this afternoon, we have a little something for everyone. Uh, no matter what your background, you can get a little something for this course. Uh, I said this afternoon, it may not be afternoon where you are. Um, <clears throat> so I want to begin with a little bit of the history behind PDBX and MSIF format. This actually was borrowed from the small crystallography, small molecule crystallography world. Uh, the CIF, Crystallographic Information Framework format, is a format used in small molecule crystallography. And this needed to be adapted to be used for macromolecules to describe the kind of molecules we have in the protein data bank. And that was the major component of the thesis of the late John Westbrook, who described ways to expand the SIF format to accommodate large macromolecules. And he is actually shown here on the left in this top picture, also way in the back in the bottom picture, but in the left of these pictures that are pictures of the MM SIF working group at different times. So I do want to point out that this is not something that the Worldwide Protein Data Bank came up on with its own. Um, yes, the Worldwide Protein Data Bank was involved, but also many members of the community were involved. Um, here is the center in this picture, um, Paula Fitzgerald, who spearheaded the original working group project. And no, she um, formerly from Merck, and in these pictures, if you know some of the faces, you may know some people from industry, from academia, software developers, many different representatives from the macromolecular community who contributed to these working groups to develop this framework. So there was very close engagement with the macromolecular crystallography community to originally form these working groups. And <clears throat> uh, what was developed was the PDBX MMSIF data format. And to the right, we have an example of a couple of sections I pieced together from a PDB entry, the PDBX MMSIF file from that entry that's taken from PDB entry 8C5M. And you notice it's obvious what this is concerning. At the bottom, you see coordinates X, Y, Z, coordinates, occupancy, B factor, the residue name. So it's a very readable file. The information we have for all the coordinates are here. Um, this represents a coordinate file. You can have other files in PDBX MMSA format. Also, the structure factor file can be in the same format. This is obviously a coordinate example. 
Since 2019, this has been the mandatory format for depositing coordinates from macromolecular crystallography structures. Refinement software packages can output coordinate files in this format. So it's very straightforward for the depositor to take what came out of the refinement software package and to directly deposit to the PDB. Mandatory deposition for cryo-electron microscopy and nuclear magnetic resonance, that is coming soon as the um, software gets ready for it. Uh, I want to note that today in this course, we'll be using the terms PDBX, MMCIF, MMCIF, and CIF interchangeably. Um, this will be strictly referring to the PDBX MMCIF format. That will be the proper definition, but we might abbreviate it for the purposes of this course. There are other flavors of MMCIF. Uh, for example, there's model CIF, which is used for to describe computed structure models uh, that were alluded to a few moments ago. That's another flavor of MMCIF. So they're different flavors, but they all have the same core SIF structure in common. Since 2014, PDBX MMCIF has been the master archival format for the PDB. Um, <clears throat> has a lot of benefits. There are no column restrictions, so you don't have limitations on the number of characters you use, you're able to accommodate ribosomes and other large structures in a single file, therefore. You can realize the principles of FAIR, that is that data in an archive must be findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable. And the PDBX MMCIF data standard allows us to realize that. So an example on the previous slide, the data is very readable. You can find data you want. It can be parsed by computer. So you can access specific metadata that's needed and you can reuse it and it'll be interoperable in a variety of different platforms. As I just mentioned, you have different flavors of MMCIF. We use one flavor for experimental structures with PDB, another flavor is used um, model CIF used for computational structures, computer structures. So the data can be reused in many different platforms and many different websites, many different types of databases. And on top of that, it's fully extensible. So we can accommodate growth in the structural biology field. There's been a boom in structural biology in terms of the size of structures that are being performed, especially with cryo-electron microscopy, as well as new advances in techniques. Um, <clears throat> the X-ray free electron laser has provided an increase in serial crystallography data and different SIF categories, and we'll learn about what a SIF category is in a short while, but different SIF categories were created to describe these. So we can see in this example on the right, which is taken from PDB entry 7Q7Q. Um, and if any of the authors were taking these examples from PDB files semi-randomly, if any of the authors are in the audience, uh, thank you for the work that you provided. Um, we see in this example that this was delivered by injection. So we can read this straight from the file and new techniques have been accommodated. Another thing about PDBX MMCIF is that it's founded on the DDL2 dictionary. And we'll learn about CIF dictionaries shortly, also in the very next lecture that will be presented. But what this allows is for checking of the PDBX MMCIF files for self consistency. And then I mentioned human and machine readable. So these are the characteristics of PDBX MMCIF. And this is a very opportune time to learn about this for reason I'm about to mention. You see on the graph of the right describes the three character chemical component IDs or ligand IDs, the three letter codes we use for our small molecules bound to protein structures or DNA ligands. These codes are running out, and these codes will be exhausted in approximately one year, possibly end of 2023 or beginning of 2024. Once that happens, any PDB entry that will be deposited after that point that contains a novel ligand or a ligand that is at least due to the protein data bank, those entries will be released exclusively in PDBX MMCIF format. So anyone 
who's interested in structure-based drug design, who's interested in ligand interactions, these new files will be exclusively in this format. So this is the perfect time to learn PDBX MM7. Also, currently, uh, the PDB ID is limited to four characters currently. We'll soon need to expand that because we're running out of four character PDB IDs. When the four character PDB IDs run out, then all newly deposited PDB entries will only be available in PDBX MMSA format. So that's something to keep in mind. So it's something important for uh, users to learn and for software developers to learn. So just to summarize what I've said in this introduction, PDBX MMSIF is the archival data standard used for the PDB. The flexible and extensible format used allows for accommodation of new structural methods and very large structures. It can be read and interpreted by the human eye, but also can be produced and read by software. And we'll be learning more about these in the upcoming talks. Information from these files can be parsed programmatically, but also visually and by web links. And again, as I want to emphasize, shortly is going to, soon enough, this will be the exclusive distribution format for coordinate data from the protein data bank. So before I hand it over to the next speaker, I want to ask if there are any questions. Here we have a question from Guy Vigors. I often want to model missing residues in a structure by aligning an alpha fold structure to a PDB structure, writing out a temporary file, and then using a text editor to simply copy and paste the missing residues into the PDB file, and then refining in Coot, for instance. However, since the MMSIF format is so much more flexible, how do I go about doing that now? Which sections of the MMSIF file do I need to edit? And how do I ensure that the same fields are present in the same order for both structures? Okay, so that is something that I think we want to come back and address later because in the very next section, we're going to see the layout of the coordinate file in MMSIF format in more detail. Um, and that will allow you to appreciate how the coordinate section, it's called atom site, the atom site section in an MMSIF file is organized. And knowing that will help to answer the question. So I'll defer that for a later point. Is there a template for the serial crystallography MMSIF entry? or did authors decide themselves which info to add? Okay, what is going to be added came from two sources, one from what's input in the deposition interface, and the other is recorded straight from the refinement package. Now, I'm not sure the depositors in the, of the structure that I cited earlier, I'm not sure what refinement software they use and how much information was recorded there. Likely some of it came straight from the refinement package, but there are other ways and we're going to learn soon about other modes as PDB extract to capture data that are not captured from your refinement package, um, particularly if you're not using them from your soft crystallographic refinement software. But I imagine much of that was captured from the crystallographic refinement software. Um, and that would be the case generally for a lot of um, refinement methodologies. But um, some other things though were probably input in the deposition interface in our one depth system. Has a date been set for when the MMSIF file will be the only format for structures? Will legacy structures still retain the old format for download? Um, the answer to the second question is yes, previous structures will still have that legacy, the old format that is already available. Um, no date has been set for when this will be the only format for structures. It's just a matter of time when we run out of PDB codes. We estimate we have roughly five to six years uh, that we run out of PDB IDs. So that will be the time frame. It depends on how fast that happens, how many depositions we receive. Um, and I said for small, um, for the small molecule ligand codes that will run out in approximately a year. So those specific entries will already be MMSIF only at that time. Um, 
So, okay, I'm informed that it's time to uh, call the next speaker. So I'm going to introduce, but I guess some of these questions will be answered from the upcoming lectures, because some of them are very relevant to the lecture lessons that are about to be mentioned, that are discussed. And first will be Dr. Ezra Pazak, who is our PDBX MMSIF Dictionary Manager here at RCSB, and he's going to be presenting the format for us. And I'll turn it over. 